What do you imagine when you think about the future? Cutting edge technology, advanced computers, tiny devices or intelligent robots. Have you ever considered that the most disruptive forces shaping tomorrow are in fact none of those things, but rather something far more familiar? The future is not a faraway place. It is not a place invented by scientists or technologists. It's just the sum of all the little things that you and I and the people we know do differently on a daily basis. It is a human phenomenon. And to understand that, you need anthropology, not technology. I've travelled a long way trying to understand how consumer behaviour shapes the future. It has taken me from sophisticated super cities and advanced R&D labs to chaotic emerging markets and the frontiers of new urban developments. But in all the places I've been, one thing always seems to stay the same. As interesting as it is when things change, the real magic happens when people do. Where will the next wave of innovation come from? So we've seen one wave already overturn the traditional media business. What's going to come next? It might interest you to know, and I spent a lot of my time speaking to crazy scientists and inventors, and I was amazed to discover that the person who invented the fuel cell, karaoke, and the CD were all one person. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, what kind of mind could simultaneously create the fuel cell and karaoke? Well, it turns out it's a very unusual mind indeed. It's a guy called Professor Nakamatsu, famous for thinking up his best ideas while holding his breath at the bottom of a swimming pool. Too much oxygen, that's very bad for brain. On the other hand, if shortage of oxygen brain feels it, then brain maximum activities, 0.5 seconds before death. It's not every day that you get an email from the White House, especially if you happen to be a tiny company with half a dozen employees, no revenue, actually to be honest, no business plan, and no, it wasn't me that actually got the email. I'm of course talking about one of the founders of Twitter. And if you cast your mind back to about June last year, when one of the co-founders of Twitter was sitting down on a Saturday morning, having his cup of coffee, turns on his computer, and there it was, the email. Shocking. But even more shocking was the next line. We've been reading your blog. We noticed that you planned to go offline next Tuesday. Do you mind delaying it for a couple of weeks? He was astonished. What could possibly have got the State Department so interested in his maintenance schedule? Well, the answer was actually thousands of kilometres away, where something extraordinary was already starting to take place. You see, the Iran elections had just started, and they'd been widely known to be rigged. But this year, Rather than just protest in the normal ways, the people of Iran were gathering together, collaborating on Twitter, using Twitter to circumvent the censorship of the government and the controls of the media. It seemed like an extraordinary moment for democracy and the potential of the internet to change the world and make it free. But I'm here to tell you the story is a little bit more complicated than that. You see, we're moving into a new era. It's an era where the platforms of the world are not just controlled by the West Coast of America. They're controlled by countries that we can't even imagine. In a sense, there are two internets rising. The internet of the West and the internet of what I'm going to tell you about today, the divergence. And these two internets and the conflict between them will shape the web that we know. Because the web that you thought you knew actually never really existed. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you the story of its future.
This kind of ability to listen to consumers is something you're seeing a lot in countries like China. So let me tell you a story about one of the greatest white goods manufacturers in the world. It's called Haya. Haya had a problem about 10 years ago. Somebody called up the, cons- the customer support line and said, "There's dirt in my washing machine." The technician thought this was very strange, so he went out to this little village, and he started to investigate. What he found was that the dirt wasn't coming from the clothes. People in the village were washing their potatoes in the washing machine. Now, what would you do if you were running a white goods manufacturer and someone rang up and said, "I want my warranty、um, back because I'm washing these potatoes and it doesn't work"? You tell them you're crazy, right? You know, and, and, <laughs> and find another machine. Well, Hyatt did something completely opposite. They reinvented the machine to be more effective at washing potatoes. Think about that. During the recent clash in 2008 between the, the Georgians and the Russians, in July and August of that year, there were two massive denial-of-service attacks launched by Russian hackers against Georgia, which managed to bring the internet down in that country. In fact, Georgia had to move its servers to the United States during the conflict. The Russian government came out and praised the hackers as national heroes. And in fact, this rather charming gentleman, I can see behind me, who was、uh, the, the deputy chair of the, the Duma. Actually said that in the future we may see conflicts that take place not only on the open field of battle, but rather in spaces on the internet. A small force of hackers, he said, could be stronger than a multi-thousand force of armed troops. I saw this gentleman and thought, is it possible that I've seen him before?、But、then again, I thought, no, that's crazy. I don't know what I was thinking. When you take those four forces together, there's no doubt we're moving into a new world—a world with a generation who've grown up never knowing a world without the web. They're a living challenge to all of us to rethink the basic principles of business. So I'd encourage all of you to seize this opportunity, to think big, to think new, but most importantly, to think quick. Because if there's one thing I can tell you with absolute certainty, it is this. The future is now.